Hello, everybody, and this is Stacy from The Advisor, and today we have our very special guest, Bernadette is here today, and she is an intuitive, spiritual, and grief coach, and she is the founder of Tell Me Our Story, Ancestral Healing. She is amazing, and the things that she does are amazing, and today she'd like to talk about heaven, and she has so much to say, and she's just an amazing person, so put your ears on, listen, and learn, because after this episode, you're going to really look at life differently. Bernadette, it's so good to have you back and congratulations because you have a new grandbaby. So congratulations. Thank you, Stacy. I know I feel like I've been away for a little bit longer than I wanted to, but um, <laughs> yes, we had a new little baby join our family, Emma, and she's absolutely adorable. And now she's um, a little over two months and uh, she is sleeping at night, but she does not like car rides. So she does her <laughs> <bit of> <laughs> So. But it is wonderful to be back and just to share. So much has been going on. I've had a lot of different things that I've been exploring in my life. And I wanted, I was thinking today about what would I love to share with your readers? And what I wanted to share today was, um, and I know I had, had told you this before, that I'm actually going to be a speaker at um, the conference, the International Association of Near-Death Studies. In, and that will be in Phoenix at the end of the summer. And as a, and I will be an ancestral healer while I am there, I'm going um, to, uh, to talk about healing and to talk about the ancestors. And um, we are, I'm on a panel with two other guests. And when I was thinking about today talking, I thought I was thinking, you know, the um, IONS, it's called IONS, if you ever hear anybody saying that, um, mm -hmm is a very special uh, group that had, that began years and years ago by doctors and other uh, scientists and other people wanting to understand near death experiences yes. and has and so much more has come out they've there have been so many studies studies that are proving it and and that people are crossing over to and, and being in heaven all mm -hmm. all of them are a little bit different but there's so many different things um, that have been explored and yeah. also is now exploring um, spiritually transformative experiences as well, which for those of us, I have not had a near death experience, but I have had some spiritual transformative experiences, which means that I've connected with spirit and I've been able to um, understand more and learn more, not only about connecting with my ancestors and in the ancestral realm, but also the spiritual realm and the connection that we have with guides and with angels. And so that's kind of the basis of what I wanted to chat with today. And I went, went at going to IONS, the topic that we were, um, that we were talking about, it's healing after having a near death experience. So, you know, often people who have, have had, um, have come back, um, it is, you know, they have troubling feelings about it. You know, sometimes yeah. it's guilt, guilt for leaving, guilt for staying, you know, wanting to stay. Yeah. Um, and also this, you know, feeling this incredible love, which is often what people who have near death experiences, they feel this amazing love and surrounded by um, light and light beings. And so coming back is, you know, can be hard and especially if they're wanting to continue to connect. So um, this wonderful, wonderful organization brings together for this conference all different modalities, healing modalities and speakers um, to help those who have had NDEs and um, S, what are they? They're STEs, spiritually yeah. transformative experiences. So you can explore them and understand them more. So our topic is going to be waking up to wisdom healing mm -hmm. gifts that awoken us and pathways to unlocking yours. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted to share a little bit about what I'm going to be talking about and really kind of what that means. Yeah. And um, I, I want to share a little bit about my story and my waking up to wisdom. So there are three of us. I'll share a little bit about the other two um, mm -hmm. panelists as well. But my story is that my husband passed away six and a half years ago. 
and he passed away from alcoholism. He came to me in 2013 and said, I have a problem. And I had known that he had struggled with alcohol, but I didn't know how sick he was. And I don't think he realized until he was, you know, until it really took over his life that he was starting to fall. And yeah. he, you know, so he passed away four years later and he had a beautiful soul, but it's a horrible disease. And it caused, there was a lot of trauma for him and for our family. We have three children and for all of us, it was very, it was very challenging. And during that time, and it's often, um, and I know your, your um, listeners will understand this, when we go through a, a traumatic time in our lives, when we hit something really big that we can't, we struggle to understand and struggle to move forward. It's often when we're looking for help from spirit, we're looking to God or to universal, whatever you want to call universal mm -hmm. energy or the, um, we're just looking for help. And we know sometimes, you know, we think we've heard about angels, we've heard about um, heaven, we've heard about all of these things. And, um, but we don't, uh, we, you know, we're looking for proof as well, which is, you know, something that stops a lot of us that we just, well, you know, I won't know anything until, you know, until I pass. But I wanted to share that during this time, I was, I was praying a lot. Actually, I was using the rosary, which I was grew up Catholic, um, have not been really a practicing Catholic, but uh, had heard John Edwards, some of your um, listeners may know who he is because he's a Long Island guy yeah. and he um, is a medium and I happened to go to one of his, um, you know, one of his events and listen to him speak. And he talked about using the rosary as a, um, a you know, as a meditation. So yeah. I was using that and I know I have shared this story on your, um, with your listeners before, but there's a, it, there's a difference to it this time. So I was, I was using that rosary and I had a visitation from a great aunt of mine who had passed away. And I didn't really know what that was except for, you know, I was interested in spirit and I was a seeker and I was looking for more information. And this was in the middle of a very challenging time. So mm -hmm. I discovered, um, so I, I went to bed one night and I had a dream and this great aunt, Sister Lou, so she was a nun, came to me and she's sitting across from me and she, I wouldn't, didn't want to look at her, but she held my hands tight and she said, we hear your prayers. She looked right at me. And when I woke, I knew that wasn't a dream. That was my first time that I began to realize I felt connected. I felt spirit. And then a few months later, I had, you know, I'm also have done ancestry, talking about ancestral healing. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. But I have looked um, and um, discovered my ancestors and their stories. And this one night, I'm still struggling as we're going through this um, with David's illness and he would rise and fall. And, um, and so this one night I was saying the rosary and uh, you say it out loud a little bit, you know, it just so you can hear it. And I began to say it in an Irish brogue. And this, um, this came through me. Some people have said to me since then that it was channeling that she, and, and I realized after, I realized who it was. It was my great, great grandmother from Ireland. Wow. I had obviously I'd never known her. She had lived, you know, a hundred years before, um, you know, I was born. And um, so she came and I knew it was her when I looked at our family tree and I could feel her spirit. And this was the beginning of my opening. And um, I didn't really understand it. When you begin to open up to spirit, some of us, it happens very quickly and you really, you know, a guide comes right away. But sometimes you have these experiences that are, you can't really explain and you aren't sure that you can even really believe them. Yes. And so that is, um, that was my, the beginning of my spiritually transformative experiences. And how it showed in my life is as I began, I had 
been, I've been doing genealogy for over 20 years, but I began to help people in an ancestral healing, helping them this, discover the stories of their ancestors and make those spiritual connections with them. Yeah. And as I would work with the ancestors and I would work with the family, their ancestors would come to me and guide me through and help me bring forth the stories that were most important for the, um, for, the, for the clients that I was working with. And mm. it was transformative to them. They were learning about things that were helping them understand why they were um, grieving the way they were grieving, or you know, it helped them understand um, patterns of behavior and just why they were, why they were struggling to move forward. And, you know, as I said earlier, we all hit those times where we may experience the loss of a loved one. We may experience a change in our life circumstances, uh, you know, something that happens with a child. Many families have addiction that affects them or, you know, people go through divorce. All of those things can bring us to our knees you know, to, can bring us to wanting to know more and, and to, um, to look for more. And so it is how that opening began, um, began for me and why I was able. So I, um, I had um, a friend that was connected with IONS with, and understood um, people that had had near death experiences. And I began to get involved and um, be connected with people from there and realizing, you know, I, when I first heard about it, I thought, well, I, you know, I don't have that connection. I haven't had that, um, that experience with heaven or that ex until I realized as I spoke with them and I listened to the stories of others that I actually, my experience of um, what I was going through with my husband, that traumatic experience was open, opening me up. And, yeah. and so, you know, that is how I began to be involved um, with, you know, some friends that were connected with IONS and, um, and I've connected with two other um, wonderful people, just a little bit to share you a, a little bit about um, their stories. You know, we connect as people open up, we connect in different ways. Yeah. So, so mine is connecting with ancestors and that has opened up and I'll talk more about heaven um, but that is what opened up to me. Um, one of the other presenters, um, her name is Melinda, and she had a near-death experience where she, um, she crossed over during, um, she, it was actually, unfortunately, during um, the loss of a child. She had a, um, uh, her, her, the placenta, you know, um, kind of, yeah, and so she not only did was she um, uh, had almost passed away, but her um, her child did. But they all crossed over, and that's where she began her deep connection. You know, she was surrounded. She and her child were surrounded by angelic beings and by family that helped them, that helped her. Um, uh, go through this process while she had been in a coma for a few weeks and then she came back they um, she knew they they let her know that the that the baby was going to stay but part of him came with her her son yeah. part of him came back with her and is still with her today but when she came back her spirit her opening she was a nurse and she had begun to see the auras around people and the, whether they were, you know, um, there, she could see whether they needed healing and she began to understand what it was that um, they needed to heal themselves. So she had a deep connection with her body and a deep connection with others. So she could say, you know, if she were to look at uh, me and she knew that there was something going on with my kidneys, she could hear her, my kidneys would give her information about what it was that was going on. And this, so it was an amazing gift 
now she misses, you know, her son dearly, but he's with her. And yeah. she, you know, so she feels that connection with heaven and she yeah. feels the loving arms around her yeah. and was able to be brought through this very traumatic episode in her life yeah. um, by that, uh, that connection by her near death experience. And so she's sharing her healing gift that she has experienced. And my other, the, the other um, panelist that is with her and her name is Rebecca. And she had the angels come to her. She was struggling at a very difficult time in her life. And she just was this one night, she just was asking God, she said, God, and she hadn't grown up with any religion, her family, she had no beliefs, nothing to really hold on to, but she had this belief in God. And yeah. she um, had, so she had this um, conversation with God. She said, she said a prayer that, God, I want to turn my life over to you. I want to do, I, I want to do your work. I want to do what it is that you want me to do. And she was turning her life over to God and she fell asleep. And then when she woke up, she saw this light above her bed and it was, it was angelic beings that had come to her and they let her know that they were, that they were with her. And that, you know, she had been heard and they were going to help her um, to be able to move forward. And she said for two years, she had this amazing connection where they were guiding her on a daily basis, communicating with her. And, and then after two years, they... Um, they wanted her to go back. They, it was kind of the, her two years of training. And then they, and this, she was in her 20s when this happened. And they wanted her to go back. And to now, um, they kind of pulled back so that she could do this on her own. And so she does healings and she does angelic healings and she does, um, you know, other healings, you know, mediumship healings. Wow. So um, you know, I share those that I share these three examples of us, of all going through very difficult times, where we wanted to open, um, you know, we were asking for you to open up. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know that I expected it to happen in that way. I mm -hmm. think we often pray, thinking that we it's a one way that we pray, at, you know, that but we don't necessarily hear back. Yeah. And so I wanted to spend a little time talking about that we have a deeper connection with heaven, with yeah. those who have crossed, um, and that when we are struggling, that we have spirit around us. Um, I know that it might be hard for some of your listeners to understand that, but I think of myself as an accidental spirit person. You know, I was definitely somebody who wanted to know more, who wanted to connect, who wanted to, was interested in listening to mediums and reading books about mediums and doing those types of things, but never thought that I would have these experiences. And my ex experience has actually moved on and I now have a spirit guide. And but that the important part is I wanted to share that it is as the three of us, I think the three of us, the three of us that are on this panel together that all woke up to wisdom. What happened during our different experiences is that our energy level raised. And as you begin to want to talk with spirit and want to connect, raising your energy level um, is what happens. So the more you try and talk to spirit and ask them to come forward, um, the more they'll begin to have a conversation with you. Yeah. And you and I were talking about this earlier. You had asked me, you said, is there, are there, um, uh, what were you asking me? Were there things that you could do that I could recommend? Um, For the spirit guys to get connected? Yeah. The spirit guide. Yes. I was asking you, are there any like 
exercises or things you could do to help your connection, you know, deepen with your spiritual guide. So you could hear them all the time and you can maybe feel a closer connection and, and really understand the messages or hear the messages, you know, that strong connection between the two. Right. Um, and where, and the, and my response, what my response was is they, they are here around you all the time. They're around all of us. And it is really learning how to communicate. And the more that you open up and ask them for help and begin to want to have that conversation, that is how they will begin to speak with you. Mm -hmm. And now I'm going back to what I do as an ancestral, you know, working with ancestral healing and helping people, um, guiding them and coaching them on a spiritual level, is that as I began to work with the ancestors. And I yeah. began working with the ancestors in, in a paper way, uh, you know, discovering their stories through uh, um, finding out their, um, their stories. And I would find out the records and the senses and things like that. And I would start to build family trees. And as yeah. I would do that, their stories would open up. And the more their stories open up, the more their energy would come in. And so, and, and I was able to share this with clients that I was working with and yeah. telling them that this is how that, that energy level begins to raise. As you learn more about them and you open up, they, they come in and they're yeah. really our first connection. You know, we, you know, a lot, we talk about um, guides and angels and spirit beings, but if, when we talk about our ancestors, they're, they're the ones, they're family. And we, and as I said, we have a paper trail, we have something that we can stand on and we know that connection is there. And I would say, as I began to discover more about my family, that, that my in, um, ancestors came to me. And you saw it when I talked about my great aunt that came in and then my great, great grandmother that, um, that spoke to me. But they also began, I would get songs. I had a, 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 a great uncle, he was a piano player. Yeah. And um, Billy Joel's the piano man kept piano man kept coming to me, and I yeah. didn't understand why. But and it began to be it was like it was a connection. It was a way. And when I discovered that, then more ancestors, you know, other songs. I just mm -hmm. had one this week. Frank Sinatra is coming to me. I don't know why. <laughs> I, think I know who it is now. But so so our um, ancestors and those who are, have crossed. And yeah. I consider ancestors, you know, I say ancestors, but those are our loved ones that, you know, our grandparents, our great grandparents, um, those are, you know, even parents, when, when our loved ones cross, they want to find ways that they can communicate so that we um, know that they're there and that their loving arms are around us and they are guiding us. They want yeah. us to continue, continue to live. Yeah. And so that is how I began this, um, the spirit connection yes. was really with my own ancestors. And that's how I have guided people. And as this conversation opens up, we, we truly, you begin to feel the energy. Sometimes yes. we'll, we talk about, you have talked about feeling energy. Um, I sometimes guide people to understand energy as um, sometimes spirit chills. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it can be a nervous energy that just um, seems to come up. Like I'm feeling it right now. I can yeah. feel energy in my body because I know they're surrounding me, wanting me to be able to share um, more about how, you know, how we can connect. But it's so it's an individual thing yes. that we all go through. It's so, brilliant. yeah. Um, yeah. Is, do you have any questions? 
You know, I, you know, it's so funny because when you were talking and you mentioned the rosemary beads, like I got chills going up and down my arm and leg. And it was funny because my, um, my, I took care of my aunt when she was coming to her last moments and I was her caretaker. And then she had rosemary beads all over the house, ro rosary all over, the, all over the house. And so when she left, I took those beads because I knew she always had one in her hand or right by her, her chair. And I took them with me and I always keep one of them is in my desk, you know, and uh, when you mentioned that, it was so funny because all of a sudden chills just came down and it was just, it was kind of like, you know, I, I, I'm not really sure exactly what the meaning was, but I know that it had to do something with her. Like she, you know, like she was, it felt like she was in my presence and she knew like she, she's, she, it was like a message, you know, I'm not sure what the message is, but you know, it was, uh, it was just weird, you know, when you talked about that, you know, I have right. the rosary beads from her in my desk. And then all of a sudden I got all these, these yeah. chills. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, the interesting thing, it doesn't have to be um, something like, you know, we think of rosary, you know, the rosary as a spiritual, like it's a, you know, a church, you know, but it, it can be an item that just means something to you. You know, yeah. it, so it doesn't have to be a religious item. It doesn't have to right. be a, an angel or a, a lot of people have pennies and things like that. It's a okay. communication, but I know, I know your listeners want, want more. They want more than, you know, they, they appreciate the feathers and they appreciate the, the, but they want to understand how they can open up, you know, a deeper connection in my um, you, we are connecting. And I just, and the reason you know, wanted to keep talking about heaven is you know, that's where they are. So we're talking into the heavenly realm and, right. um, and the heavenly realm is, you know, many dimensions, but they're in that they're in, they're in heaven and that's where we're connecting with them. And so there's the, the language can be, you know, all differently, but that is, um, that is where we, that is where they are is, yeah. and, and, I, and I think I want people to understand that because um, sometimes when we're, we're stuck in our 3D world, we feel like, okay, you know, we buried them, they're in the ground. Yeah. So how can I now believe they're somewhere, that they're somewhere else? And right. I, you know, so I want to continue to talk about the energy and how you feel that, you um, you feel the energy and, you know, we know it, you know it when you um, walk into a room mm -hmm. and you can feel somebody's good energy or their bad energy. Yes. You know, um, if you get on, you know, I remember if I, I, if I would get on an elevator or, you know, a subway or a train or something and you are near somebody that has good energy, like, okay, I'll go sit next to them. You know, yeah. you just know that. And we right. if if the energy is not good, you know, you know, and that energy is around all of us. And when mm -hmm. we when we you know this, we are our um, spirit beings um, using a physical body for this for now. And yeah. so we go back. We are we will when we cross over, we will then be the spirit guides for those. You know, I just said this beautiful granddaughter. I have a little grandson. Now I have a little granddaughter. You know, I will be their guides. I will be their connection to the other side. And mm. it is about raising the positive spirit energy. Um, it is about um, spiritual awakening. And uh, and it's, uh, it's how we all learn to um, uh, live a more loving life, a more yeah. forgiving life. Yes. Uh, yeah, less judgment, you yeah. know, all of those things. Um, and I just, you know, it's, I have to say that um, this whole process of what I went through after David passed and uh, deciding to uh, make this change, I I've been guided to it. Um, yeah. I, I didn't start out to be an expert in ancestral healing, yeah. but it came to me and um, I feel like it's a calling to help others. Um, I've recently gotten a certification in, um, it's called a dream building program, but it's a, a centered around universal energy to build a life that we would love. That yeah. we get stuck and we begin our healing 
that we need a path out. And, yes. um, and so it is, uh, I feel like it is, you know, I'm here to help people yeah. um, begin to under look back, know where they've come from, know that things are passed down. When we talked about it, when we talk about yes. ancestral healing, that yes. things are passed down, but also know that um, they want us to live a life. They want us to move forward. Yeah. We all, whether you are in your thirties or in your eighties, we all yeah. have life left to live. Right. And that, um, you know, that God, our, our uh, universal energy, universal life want us to um, live a life that we love and yeah. to, um, you know, love one another, you know, kind right. of, yeah. I, you know, I, I was always intrigued by life after death. And I was always intrigued to like read stories from people who have experienced it. And, um, you know, it, it, it just, uh, it always fascinated me because people would, you know, they all had different, different, um, you know, stories to tell. And, and, um, you know, some of them didn't want to come back because they felt it was so beautiful that they didn't want to come back. And then, you know, one woman had mentioned that she had lost her, her son after he had passed, she wrote a book about it. And, um, and then she said, but then she connected with him when he was in the heavens and she said that her relationship with him, she had a closer relationship with him after he passed yeah. than when he was on earth with her. And she said it was, it was, it, it was a remarkable experience that she still continues today. And I can't think of the title of the book, but it was really intriguing. And it's, and it's funny when you think about genealogy, you know, a lot of times, like when I went to Florence, I felt like deja vu and I didn't know why. And it was like, I felt like I was there before, you know, and then I went into a museum and I had had a dream before I left. And I, I remember seeing these documents and I remember hearing music in the background, but I, and the music was just, it was someone singing it. And I couldn't tell because I'm, I'm, I don't speak it. I couldn't tell if it was Italian or Spanish. I couldn't, I, you know, it was just, I just, oh, I only knew what I woke up to remember. And I just remember the singing in the background. I knew it was European. It had to be Italian or it had to be Spanish. And, and it was kind of like an operatic and like from long ago. And when I went into the museum, the same image was in, in it was a document and it was in glass and it had something to do about the country and, you know, and the, and the beginning of what, how they started and the, and the formation and back in the day. And, and I was like, wow, you know, so I must've been dreaming about Italy. And for some reason, there's a connection. I don't know exactly what the connection may be in my other life. I lived in Italy. I don't know. Or maybe I have family. I don't know. And yeah. then, you know, and it was funny how you talk about sometimes you have a, a, a raise in, in wisdom, you know, and I, I thought when you said that, um, I, I thought about um, when I when I was uh, um, when I had uh, encephalitis, I had been in a coma for four days and they said either you'd be paraplegic or she'll have epilepsy, I, not epilepsy, she'll be paraplegic or she'll have brain damage when she comes out. And they didn't know what was going to happen if I was going to come out or not. And when I came out, I, they diagnosed me with epilepsy because of the seizures. But to this day, they cannot find any scar tissue in my brain that caused cause the seizures. So, you know, it's just, it's funny how things happen. And it's just funny, you know, it's like, sometimes I feel things are always meant to be, you know, things happen for a reason We're we're on a journey, I feel like, you know, and, you know, and, you know, I really do think that I developed epilepsy for a reason. They wanted me to have it because it would took me on a different path, you know, and, you know, and, and then you talked about how certain things like songs. And I thought about, it's so funny because when I would watch TV, that the, the sitcom mash would come on and that song in the beginning would always bring tears to my eyes. And I don't know why. And I never, I never knew anyone in my family that was from that, that fought in the Korean war. I don't know what, it, what, what the meaning, but I know there's a, a, a meaning and there's some, some type of symbolism because every, you know, all you see is a picture on TV. You see them trying to save people and, you know, they're taking the people out of the helicopters and they're bringing them there to get, to get medical help. And the music would always trigger tears in my eyes. And I don't, I never knew why, but I, I knew it has to relate to my past somewhere. I just, 
you know, was oblivious to it, but I know, I know for sure it has to do something with previous lives or, you know, or maybe down the road analogy, you know. Well, you know, it is, um, I think that is a really good point. And I, I, to just to bring glad that you brought that up because it is, you know, we do have experience we have had, um, and I know not everybody is comfortable with the idea of past lives, um, but there is that, you know, we're made up of many, you know, of many lives and anybody that has crossed over. So it's a really good, I was just speaking with Melinda the other day and she was saying, you know, there is no time on the, we only, you know, time here on earth, um, is, you know, we, we need it for days to pat, but we have time here, but there is no time. And so all of these experiences, you know, when we do cross over, we can see all of the lives that we have lived. And, you know, it is all about um, continuing to learn and move forward. And each life is about um, raising up and, and, you know, continuing. And I also wanted to talk about, you know, one of the things, and I don't know why, but it just keeps coming up to talk about, um, you know, we struggle with fear. You know, fear holds so many of us back. Oh, yeah. uh, fear has been a, a very a big thing in my life. You know, there's a lot of, I grew up with, we go back to ancestry. I grew up with a lot of scarcity. I grew up with, uh, you know, all of those different types of things. And fear holds us, holds so many of us back. We're stuck. We struggle to move forward. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I think, you know, all of the talk that I've been talking about, I think what, what spirit wants me to say is that um, we, there is a way for us to uh, begin to understand uh, there's more, there's more than just this life that we're in. And there is guidance, it's not just guidance. It's like, I can't, I want, it's like, I want you to feel what I'm feeling. We yeah. talked a little bit about that before when you feel it, you know, a spirit often will come to you right at your heart center. And that you'll feel very strongly at your heart center. But I think maybe the reason they're bringing up fear is because it is a time that we want to, that um, causes us to want to reach out when you're scared, Mm -hmm. when you don't know what the next steps are. Yes. And, and it's okay if that's when you decide that you want to, you now is now the time that I want to know about spirit or now is the time that I want to pray. Yes. And, and, uh, and they want you to know that it doesn't matter that you haven't been praying your whole life or that you had no connection. My, uh, the other Rebecca, Rebecca had no religious experience in her life, none. And she finds herself praying to God saying, I want to turn my life over to you. And the angels come. And it was because she had so yearned, you know, she'd been yearning for this because she had fear. It was, so I want, um, I would, I don't want people to be afraid about spirit. I want them you know, they can, I can help so many. I mean, I help people go through this process. So there isn't that fear that you can begin to open up and get um, answers. Uh, And the answers come not from me. It's not me giving you answers. It's me helping you either connect with your ancestors or connect with, with spirit and mm-hmm. they are the ones that have the answers for you. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. I am just a temporary conduit to help you come mm-hmm. together so right. that you can, you can know that you can do this on your own. Right. I, di- I did this, it happened, and, and it often does happen that when you have some trauma, yeah. it, many people have a big opening when, when there's a traumatic event in their life, whether it's a physical, it can be a physical event. It can be a dramatic event, um, just in the family, a loss. It can be a terrible a hurricane and losing yes. everything in that way. It's where that real gut fear, you know, comes in. And um, so I just, I want them to know, I want everybody to know that it really is open to you to, to begin this journey. And, and it's not, a, oh, if I can do it, you can do it. It's right. more, I can help you 
understand how you can begin to open. Right. And it does put some means that you have to put down some of your skepticism. Yes. So, you know, when people see, you know, they see that penny or they see that, um, that feather or whatever it is, or that song comes on, mm -hmm. don't dismiss it. As you begin to, and sometimes it's numbers. A lot of people communicate with numbers, one, yeah. one, one, three, three, threes. The more it, it happened with me, the more I acknowledged that 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 they were communicating with that yeah. that way, I saw them all the time. Like they increased. Yes. So they find it, and the language doesn't have to stay the same. So you might start with pennies, or you might start with songs, or you might start. Um, and I did, I will share that, uh, and I don't know if I've shared this before, that the guide that I have, I did, be, I did use a pendulum. Someone mm -hmm. had told me, and I was not um, convinced, I never, I did, wasn't, you know, didn't feel comfortable with it, Yeah. but I, I prayed about it and decided to just try it. Yes. And, and that was a way, um, but I could guide, if somebody was wanting to know more about that or just how to, to begin to open up, but know that if you are in deep fear and if you are in deep, um, not able to move forward and feel like you are, you can't vision a life, you know, you don't see, you can't see beyond. Yes. There is a way there is a way to to move forward, and um, and you can. And there are tools that you can be taught to help you do that. And that's so important to know. And and I, I think someone ha like having someone like you, who is a spiritual coach, who who guides people and shows people and teaches people and helps people understand how to strengthen their spirituality, is so important. And to learn more about genealogy and how it all relates and how everything connects. Once you have a clear picture and you understand how everything works, and then you understand the things you could do to help yourself get closer to the spirit, uh, your life can change so much because, you know, fear, you know, fear is one of, of not knowing. And that's, that's what scares people is not knowing, you know, um, or they're afraid of what they're going to hear, you know, will they like it? Will they not like it? You know, um, you know, and, um, you know, that that's one thing that stops people. And then, you know, and then if you're not happy where you are and you do feel stuck, that's when that's when the depression starts to fall in. You see people's just you know, unhappy, you know, feel depressed. They get lost in life. They just don't know what their true calling is, you know, because they haven't really, you know, developed their true meaning in life. But a lot of times if we rely on spirit and we rely on, you know, on, on understanding ourselves in a more spiritual way and connect with spirit, you can, you know, they come to you and they, they guide you, I believe, and, and they, they help you realize who you, you are and, and what your purpose is. And it's funny, sometimes, you know, I'll get, you know, I'll get, um, I'll, I'll get like, I'll be outside and I might see something. And then in my head, they'll say, that's a sign. And then I'll look it up and I'll, I'll look, what is the spiritual meaning of da, 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 da. And, you know, and it, it pertains to what I'm going through in life or it pertains mm -hmm. to something then it kind of gives me the answer in a sense, you know, um, you know, and they use sometimes nature, you know, right. as, as a right. way of, of uh, connecting. Right. Yes, absolutely. And that, you know, that's the other thing. Um, the thing about exploring all of this is so many of us, I was not comfortable with woo woo. I was not comfortable. <laughs> I did not, it did not fit into anything that I, I had curiosity. I kept, yeah. you know, when we talked about, you and I had talked about, you know, interest in like ancient civilizations and different religions and things like that. I had curiosity, um, yeah. but I was not comfortable with, you know, woo woo. Um, and it doesn't have to feel like that. There yes. are ways to open up. And that's why I that's why I feel my gift was the ancestors, because yeah. there are ways to know to have a connection with family that way, that you can feel that is, and it doesn't feel so scary. Like I, I don't want to believe in a being because that a being is too scary for me. But yeah. I, and even sometimes an angel, it's like they, because it, it, it means they have to leave this earth and cross over into this other realm. And mm -hmm. I can help you do that. But if you are somebody that wants to stay and just wants to 
wants that spirit connection to be closer to earth. Yeah. That's how the the ancestor the ancestral healing has been because it it truly guides us and you and that healing feels like it comes from the learning but it's also coming from the ancestors around you that are giving you that feeling that higher energy feeling to move through whatever it is that you're struggling with so. I'm so glad they brought up fear because that came in because I because that is really where I wanted to go. And I, I'm glad that we got to hit that because I think that so, so many of us um, can't move forward. And and I, I was one of I was so there and yeah. used and you know, and I use spirit. I used spirit counselors and spirit um, guides. Yeah. yeah, to I think um, everyone should have one. I know, I know, you know, it is, it's a way to go out into the world and look and, you know, maybe investigate things. And when you feel that you're up against something that you're not so sure of, it doesn't, you're not sure if it's safe, that you can come back and say, what was I feeling? Like, did, was that a, was that a good thing or not such a good thing? And yeah. um, it is, it was, sometimes it's part of growth. Sometimes yes. we hit that uncomfortableness, um, uncomfortableness. It is us moving forward, trying to move forward. And other times it's, no, let's take a step back. Let's go in a different direction. And when I was talking to you, like the, my, I felt my spirit guide. And what I, when I felt, is the, they said to me, the fear is based on being scared. They're, they're skeptical, not, not because they just don't believe. It's because they're scared. And they're afraid. And that's what holds them back is being afraid. Right, right. And it is such a gift when some of this opens up, when you begin to understand the world starts to make more sense to you. And, yeah. and, and then you read things and you, you discover that um, this has been here all the time and we yeah. just haven't, um, haven't been able to see it. And I also, I feel like too, you lose your fear of death. You don't fear mm -hmm. death because you know that there's something waiting on the other side that's even better than what we have right now. And that there's more, to, a lot more to experience. Right. It's just a small fragment. And, you know, and we've been there before and we've come back and, you know, yeah. and, but, you know, it, for some people that may sound a little bit, you know, too yeah. much, but, you know, well, um, but it's true. It's very true because sometimes you think, well, if I learn about this, does that mean I'm going to cross over sooner? Or I don't want to cross. I don't want to know anything because I don't want to. I don't want to go there any sooner. And, yeah. And it doesn't mean that. It's almost the opposite. It yeah. almost gives you the opportunity to really enjoy this lifetime because you that because that fear is gone. Like you, you, you don't have that fear of. Um, of crossing. And, you know, I have, I am also certified as an end of life doula. And I've okay. been with people who are very close um, to death or as they're passing. And it is very, it, it is, oh, it is this, I won't say it's the same, but it is, is as beautiful as bringing as a new life coming in is one that is tired and has done their job and are yeah. ready to go home and, and to, to have that, um, that peace and that, you know, that, yeah. that rest, yeah. and them go. And so many times it is a beautiful experience, especially if they're ready for it, if they know it's going to happen. And they know I had this one great little old, uh, she was 89. She was hilarious. And, but as she was passing, I just kept telling her, you're going to go to sleep here and you're going to wake up there. And yeah. she had a very peaceful passing. And so it is, it's a conversation I wish we all could have more of, yeah. um, but just allowing, you know, I would love to invite people to, you know, come spend a little time with me. I, I do offer, I offer, a, a, both of these are free, but a 30 minute quick kind of session, a discovery session, just if you want to just know more about the mechanics, like how do you do it or that, and then I also offer for those that really want to spend a little time to think about maybe moving forward and um, that I have a strategy session and I spend usually 45 minutes to an hour with somebody if they're really looking to 
maybe understand what what uh, working together would would look like. But I would um, love for, and I will share with you both of those uh, those URLs so that they could choose one or the other. But I don't want them. I don't want anyone to feel like, oh, it's. I am an easy person to talk to. You are. Yeah, and I I want to, this is about me helping anybody move forward. And so my gift is to, you know, let me spend at least a little time with you. And if it, if it, you feel like you could really use somebody that was helping and coaching you, then we can talk about that and we can move forward in that direction. But let's, let's spend some time and let me help you um, answer some of your questions. Because it's right. what, hopefully what this is doing for you is filling you with more questions that, and, and more reasons to want to learn more. Right, exactly, exactly. And those URLs we'll put in the description box so people will have it. That way they can click on it and they can make you know time to you know uh, meet with you and speak with you on Zoom. And yeah. uh, that would be a wonderful thing. So we'll put that in the description box. Now tell everybody the different services that you have that you, you provide. Right. So it is what I'm doing now is an ancestral healing journey that is also a coaching journey. So I'm taking helping people understand their um, going back, looking at their past, the things that the trauma that may have been passed down, helping them begin that healing, understand yeah. healing, and then helping them take the steps to move to move forward. I do that on a one-to-one -one, clients on a one-to-one -one level, but I yeah. also do the second half, which is the the moving the moving forward. And after some healing has been done, I do that as a class. So that comes out of that's a little bit less um, less expensive as we you know work through. So yeah. it, in both cases, there is some time to do in both times, there's time to work on the ancestral healing on the one to one with about your family. If right. you need me to do the the genealogy, then we, I can do that as well. But if you have some genealogy done and I can just look and look for some of the, um, look at some of the stories or discover some of the stories with you. Yeah. So that's why it's important to have a conversation. And we, that's why I offer a free session to, to get started and to have the conversation to see where you're at and um, choose from there. Oh, that's wonderful. I love it. I love it. Now you are you coming out with a program in the in the, in the future? Are you working on a program? I am, and actually, that will be. I'm the 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 program that I'm working on is it is the Dream Builder program, and it is a part of what of the the full comprehensive ancestral healing, and then the Dream Builder program, and the Dream Builder program will stand alone. And that truly is, as I said, when you're ready to you know want to find a way to move forward to begin to vision what a life that you would love using some spiritual concepts and using forgiveness and compassion with yourself about the journey that you've been through so far and looking yeah. forward to uh, deciding or, or visioning yeah. a dream, visioning something that you would want. And there are specific steps to take you to move you forward. So it's right. more than just sitting and thinking about it. it. It's a, it's a process where you get to do some, a little bit of self evaluation, looking inside you. Yes. And I guide you through this. And I, as again, I do this, sometimes I do it one-on-one -on -one if that's more comfortable for someone. And I also, I am, I will have a class probably by the end of July, I will have yes. at least have a date if not have, um, have the class set up. So I would anticipate, I have a, a uh, on my website, I have kind of a placeholder saying, if you're interested, you know, send yeah. me a message. So. Oh, that's awesome. Now, if we had to take today's session, everything we talked about today, are there certain things you'd like to emphasize, you know, certain um, turning points that you really think are important that the listeners should understand or, you know, something, things that come to mind that you think would be useful? I think the most important, important part was when we turn the conversation towards fear. And, and I think the reason for that, I wanted to share with you the experience that people had, how this connection with the other side could be. But 
when it it is it is about you it is about the your listener the what the person that's hearing my voice right now and want and them recognizing that they want to move forward and they need some help and that they want to that there is a way and spirit is part of this yes. and that they are they they want to it is an amazing experience when you begin to feel it and yes. it is something in it it doesn't always happen quickly but it does begin to happen immediately right. so it's, if that makes sense so there okay. you will always as soon as you begin even if you were to just listen to this or you only hear this um this podcast and then just start to do some of the things like talking to them and just asking them for signs and awesome. recognizing, you know, ask them when you see those numbers, did you send yes. me those? If you sent me those, send me them again. Yeah. So there is stuff that there is work that you can do alone, but just to know that fear is what we're trying to help you move through. And right. that is what holds so many of us back. And it is yeah. the one thing that I know that spirit, our God, the universal life force, the one thing they don't want us to have. It is yeah. we shouldn't, we, they don't want us to live in a world of fear. Right. That is so true. That is so true. Life should be a learning experience, a learning experience where we can learn from each other, where it's filled with love and appreciation of one another, not hatred or not anger. And, and to live in a, as a life, you know, would be beautiful where everyone could be kind to one another and we can grow off of each other. And, you know, but, but we can only, you know, we, the people who are willing to and, you know, hopefully those people like you and I can change other people's lives. And then, you know, and maybe eventually, you know, the snowball effect where you see you see communities of people grow and grow and grow because they start to feel the changes and they start to understand and they start to see how significant the spiritual world can be. And um, I think, it, you know, it just it just takes time. And I think it, you know, with with time and uh, and really having somebody by your side you know, a lot of great things could ha definitely happen. Definitely. So Bernadette, if people want to go to you, like where can they find you? My website is tellmeourstory.com. And it tell me our story is from the point of view of the child asking the parent to tell me our story. So it's www.tellmeourstory.com. And there's a lot of information you can download uh, there, I have free gifts that you can download. It's a, a couple of different ones. It's all together. It's like three, uh, three pages and you can get started a little bit of getting started. And that's where you can uh, connect and, and make a session, a discovery session or a strategy session with me as well. But I'll, I'll, I'll put those links in for you. Oh, I love it. I love it. Well, this has been amazing, Bernadette. You have you have just shed so much light on so many topics that so many people are curious about. So many, you know, whether or not they are skeptical or not, they these questions still lie in their head. You know, whether they want to admit it or not. You know, there are people who you know know that there's more, more to it. You know, and they and they are curious and they and they 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 look to find the answers. And then you have people who you know everybody's curious what happens. You know, and but they're like we said, fearful, you know, yeah. that came, they're fearful. And what came to me after you said that was they're fearful because they're scared. So, you know, it's overcoming that fear, overcoming that, that, that feeling of being scared and fearful. And you have to just, you know, they say the best way to overcome fear is to face your fears and yeah. to just let it down. And it, once you let it down and you open yourself up, you know, beautiful things will happen. And I truly, you know, I, I guarantee the person will have such a wonderful experience once they let their barriers down. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. Uh, and I, you know, definitely feel that it's just become such a calling and I'm so grateful to be able to share this with you and your audience. So just thank you. Thank you for the invitation. Oh, you're very welcome. And thank you so much for being on the show today. Like always, it's a beautiful pleasure to have you on the show. Thanks, Stacey. You have a great day.